talking about anatomy and physiology or <clears throat> basically we are going to discuss about the correlation of yogic practices and anatomy physiology because as a yoga teacher primarily you are going to deal with the human body so we need to new, know a few things which are related with the human body the words are big enough anatomy and physiology but then the meaning is very simple anatomy it means the normal structure of the human body and physiology is the normal functioning of the human body so first off i would just say that we are going to deal with the normal structure and normal function we are not going to talk about abnormalities we are not going to talk about any disease conditions so what goes on normally in our body what is the normal structure of our body that we are going to discuss in these sessions so maybe next five or six sessions we'll be talking only and only about the human body and the functions of the human body <clears throat> so to start with the human body i think everyone knows it is made up of cells or in general i would say any living organism it can be a dog it can be a cat it can be a tiger it can be a lion any living organism is made up of cell the basic unit is the cell as the elements are made up of atoms and molecules the human body is made up of cell so there are billions and billions of cells no one has tried to actually count them it is just an estimate that there are billions of cells in our body and this single cell each single cell you can't see it with your eyes i think you are aware of these facts that you need to have a magnifying lens a microscope and under that microscope you can see the cell so the <clears throat> first cell of the human body it is developed by the union of the male sperm and the female ovum so the sperm and the ovum they will come together and they will form the first cell of our body now this first single cell it multiplies into two cells those two cells they further multiply into four cells these four cells they further multiply into eight cells the number goes on increasing the multiplication it goes on increasing and then this is you can say the starting of our life during pregnancy this multiplication is going on and the number of cells they go on increasing and increasing and increasing and a time comes when the cells they start specializing themselves in the functions because each and every cell in our body can't perform all the functions so they need to specialize themselves so certain cells they come together they form a group which we call them as the tissues now i think this tissues is also a very um, common term which we use in our day to day life tissue so it's a group of cells now these tissues they further group together they come together and they form certain organs and these organs they further function together to form the various systems in our body now if i actually go in the reverse order that would be easier to understand maybe say every one of us knows about digestive system at least three times a day we eat some of us maybe more than that but then at least three times a day we are eating so digestive system everyone knows it so it's one of the systems in our body and what it is made up of i think you know the word stomach some of you know small intestine large intestine maybe the liver so they are the organs of this system so digestive system it is made up of organs like the stomach the small intestine the large intestine the liver and so forth and these organs they are in turn made up of tissues which are group of cells so this is in brief the understanding of our body or the working or the formation of our body now as i said cell is the most important thing let us try to understand what is a cell if you look at the definition only two words are very important the cell is a structural and functional unit of the body that's it simple to remember simple to understand it's a structural unit and at the same time it's a functional unit so a cell has certain specific structure and at that same time it is capable of performing certain functions if the cell is not performing a function we will say it's a dead cell so only structure is not important 
the functions are also important now we'll come to the structure later as far as the functions are concerned the most important functions of the cell are production of bioenergy now i have used the word bioenergy for that maybe you can use different word for it maybe vital energy or whatever you wish to use it but then this energy is definitely different from the pranic energy what we talk in yoga pranic energy is not what i am talking of i am talking of the energy which is required for the day to day activities maybe for example working in the office maybe running maybe exercising maybe working on a computer all these things it requires energy and that energy is produced in each and every cell of our body so those billions and billions of cells they produce this energy maybe the energy uh, which we measure in the terms of calories i think you know this word okay the calorie so that kind of energy i'm talking of i'm not talking about the pranic energy then the second function is storage each and every cell in our body is capable of storing food substances commonly we can say glucose carbohydrates some proteins some fats up to a certain extent some vitamins and minerals so our cell has a capacity to store the food so that this food can be utilized at the time of crisis when you don't have that food this stored food can be utilized for energy production same thing for vitamins and minerals nowadays we are becoming too much fussy about those vitamin thing and mineral thing every day we need to take some supplement you will feel that today oh i didn't have vitamin a and the other day you feel that i am lacking sodium but at that time we forget that we are being made by god and god has created everything by giving it a good thought so everything we have stored in our body vitamin a vitamin uh, maybe minerals everything up to some days we can utilize that stored food substances so do remember that and of course certain diseases are also related with it for example if you store large amounts of fats in the cells the commonest disease everyone knows it's obesity overweight so diseases when it comes to even yoga yoga as a balancing technique yoga works at a cellular level we think only about the muscles joints and ligaments but yoga works at a cellular level then the next function is multiplication very important function as such every function is important but then multiplication is important because our cells they become older and then after some days they stop functioning so you can say they are dead cells so these dead cells they need to be replaced by young efficient new cells and that's carried out by the cells themselves the cells they multiply so when the old cell dies away when the old cell is non functional then the place is taken up it's replaced by a young new cell the commonest commonest example day to day life example sometime or the other in your life you must have suffered from a very common condition we call it as dandruff huh? you have the scaly thing coming up from your hair and you say oh i have a dandruff then you use certain shampoo or some something and then you just wash it off so what is this dandruff it's basically the skin cells the dead skin cells so usually the life span of our skin cell is around 21 days our skin cells they survive only for 21 days 3 weeks roughly so every 3 weeks you get a new skin you must be knowing about snakes huh they shed away their skin so human beings we are the same we just shed away our skin but not like the snake just one time you just shed everything otherwise you would have been seen skin everywhere that doesn't happens but off and on we just throw away our skin cells 21 days so just just try to calculate your own age from your birth till today every 21 days you have been getting new skin i think it's more than the time of maybe purchasing new clothes in your life so the number of skin layers what you have got till today they're definitely more 
But then if you have to get this new skin cells, obviously you need to multiply them. You need to increase the number. So multiplication is very important. Another example I can talk of is, for example, the blood cells. So the blood cells, they can survive for around uh, 120 days. So after 120 days, the blood cells, they are old, they can't function, they are dead. They are being just thrown out, recycled, and you can get new young cells. So each and every cell in our body is being replaced. The only thing is their time duration is different. The maximum survival is for the liver cells, which can survive for maybe seven, eight years. So the maximum survival, you can say seven, eight years, or in other words, I can say that after every seven or eight years, all the cells in our body has been replaced. So every seven, eight years, you have a new functional body. The only exception for this is the brain cells, the nervous system cells. The nervous system cells, they cannot be replaced. The brain cells, they cannot be replaced. Recent researches are coming up. They are trying to just regenerate the brain cells and other things. But then naturally, till date, we can say that the brain cells are not replaced. And then lastly, it's a specific function depending on the position, depending on the location of the cell. So depending on the position, depending on the location in the body, the cell has to perform certain specific function. Like simple thing, a stomach cell. What do you expect from the stomach? It's digestion. So for digestion, what you need is digestive juices. So the digestive juices will be produced, will be synthesized in the stomach only, by the stomach cells only. Have you seen sometime that the digestive juice is just dropping down from the tip of your finger? The cell is the same here and in your stomach. The cell is the same. But depending on the location, depending on the position, there are certain modifications where that cell can perform that specific function. So the digestive juice will be produced in the stomach itself. It, not, it will not be produced by the skin cells. The skin cell has a different function to do. So depending on the Location, depending on the position, the cell has to perform specific functions. Now, just in short, we'll have the structure of the cell. This is just an overview of how a cell looks in our body. So, obviously, it is magnified under a microscope. So, you just can go through quickly three, two, uh, three important things. One is the covering, the yellow thing which you can see, the covering of the cell. It is called as the cell membrane. It helps the oxygen to be absorbed in the cell. It helps the glucose to be absorbed inside the cell. As each cell is a different cell, so it needs glucose, it needs oxygen. So that can be absorbed through the covering of the cell, the cell membrane. The, uh, the central portion, uh, which you can see, the red one, uh, that's the nucleus, centrally placed nucleus. So that nucleus, it actually controls over the cell. We say that the brain controls our body. So similarly, the uh, central portion of the nucleus, it will control the functioning of the cell. So each and every cell, I would say, it has a single individual brain, which is taking care of all the functions of the cell. And this cell, it is filled up with a fluid, with a liquid. And that liquid is called as the cytoplasm. So you can just take note of three important things. The covering of the cell, which is called as the cell membrane. Then the central part of the cell, which is called as the nucleus. And the fluid or the liquid, which is inside the cell, which is called as the cytoplasm. So these three things, you can just take note of that. Now, as I said earlier, the cells have to perform specific function depending on the position. So according to the specific functions, we have divided our body into these various systems. The muscles, the skeleton, the digestion, the respiration. So these are all the various systems which are functional in our body. Now, one thing do take a note of that is that these are the systems which we have 
made in our body or we have divided our body into these systems for our understanding as such <clears throat> all the systems they depend on one another no single system can work independently all the systems they depend on one another <clears throat> If I just take a very simple example that if I bend my arm in the elbow, simple action, I am bending my arm in the elbow. So out of these systems, definitely it's a movement. So it's the muscles which are doing this movement. It's the elbow joint. So it is actually the skeleton which is involved in that. But then you need oxygen for this movement. You need blood circulation for this movement. So the respiratory system, the heart and circulation, they are also working. And definitely this movement can be done only if the brain is coordinating it. Some muscles contracting, some muscles relaxing. So the brain has to coordinate the function. The brain has to send signals uh, to the uh, elbow joint, to the muscles and everything. So the brain is also involved, the nervous system is also involved. So just moving the elbow, your nervous system is involved, your digestive system is involved, your respiratory system is involved, your circulatory system is involved and no doubt it is the muscles and the joint. I am just giving you this simple example to emphasize that when it comes to yogasan practice, mostly the modern, modern yogasan practice is focused only on the joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, that's it. But then obviously even if you are moving at the level of joints, ligaments and tendons, still it has an effect on the other systems also. So yoga is basically a holistic approach. So next time when you are practicing yoga, son, don't just focus on the joints, don't just focus on the ligaments, don't just focus on the muscles. The focus should become a bit deeper. How and other things we'll discuss it uh, sometime later but then the focus of yoga practice is not only joints and ligaments it's something deeper something greater than that and definitely you are going to get results get benefits at all those levels if you focus if you practice yoga sun according to the principles of yoga sun okay now just having a look at the muscular system each session maybe we will just try to discuss of one particular system and obviously my main concern is to correlate it with the yogic practices because you are here to be yoga teachers so that's more important the structure only the structure and function is not important it's basically the correlation which is important this is just a, just an overview of the muscles in general the muscles in our body now <clears throat> the first question obviously comes up is what are these muscles made up of? I know that most of you know the answer it's made up of proteins. Oh yes, they are made up of proteins, no doubt about it. But then anything and everything in our body when the question comes up what is it made up of? The answer is very simple, it's made up of cells. Because anything and everything in our body is a cell. But then these cells, they are certain specific cells, they are certain modified cells and these cells, they are having a longer length as compared to the thickness or breadth you can say. So these cells, they look like fibers, they look like threads and when these fibers, they come together, they form a bundle and this bundle of fibers, we call them as a muscle. So when you name any muscle, for example, the biceps, the triceps, the trapezius, I think you know these few common names. So what is a biceps? Basically, it's a group, it's a bundle of muscle fibers. And what are muscle fibers? They are muscle cells. So when the muscle fibers, they form a bunch, a bundle, you call them as a muscle. And you name them various names. As I said, a few of them, you can go on naming the muscles. Now. <clears throat> Each and every muscle in our body, it has two types of muscle fibers, white muscle fibers and red muscle fibers. Any muscle, any muscle in our body, it is made up of both these muscle fibers, the white fibers and the red fibers. Now functionally, these white fibers and red fibers, they are different, a little bit different. So whenever the action is fast and quick, predominantly, 
it is the white fibers which perform that action. So even sometimes they are called as fast twitch fibers, fast twitch or quick twitching fibers, quickly contracting fibers. So the movement is fast, the movement is quick, predominantly it is the white fiber. But then there is one trouble here. When the white fiber is working, they say oh, we can't work with less oxygen, we want more oxygen. We will not work with small quantities, please give us more oxygen. So if these fibers, they demand more oxygen, what is to be done? The lungs, the respiration has to work more because more oxygen and at the same time the blood circulation has to go on increasing so the heart has to work more. So whenever the action is fast and quick, the respiratory rate it goes high and the heart rate it goes high because it is the white muscle fiber. And on the other hand, red muscle fibers they work when the action is slow, steady, controlled action. So when you are working slowly, when you are moving slowly in a controlled manner, it is the red fibers which work predominantly. And interestingly, these red fibers, they work with less amounts of oxygen. They say, okay, if you just supply us minimum quantities of oxygen, still will work, will carry out the work, don't worry about the oxygen. So they work with less oxygen. So obviously, your lungs and your heart is not overworked. They have to work normally or sometimes I would say even less. So there is no overload on the heart, there is no overload on your lungs when the red fibers are working. And interestingly, the last word you can check, it's mentioned the presence of myoglobin. Now what is this myoglobin? Myoglobin, I think you have heard uh, one word, hemoglobin. Sometimes you go to the laboratory and just check your hemoglobin. So globin basically is a protein. So here also globin is a protein and myo is related with the muscle. So it's a protein in the muscle which can store oxygen. Interesting. It's a protein in the muscle which can store oxygen. So when it will store oxygen? When you are not working. Say for example you are lying down comfortably. Your muscles they don't need too much of energy. So the oxygen which is going to the muscles, this myoglobin, it will store the oxygen. And when the muscle starts working, this stored oxygen, it is released. And God has made one complication here. This oxygen which is released from myoglobin, only the red fibers can use it. The white fibers don't use it. The red fibers, they can use it. So when you are resting, you have stored some oxygen in your muscle and that stored oxygen can be used by the red fibers. So when you are working slowly, when you are working gently, when you are moving slowly, the red fibers will work predominantly. And now I think you have got one answer to one of your questions that why yoga practice is to be performed slowly and gently. Because less requirement of oxygen and less workload on the heart, less workload on the lungs. And the ultimate effect is going to be slowing down or minimizing the basal metabolic rate, BMR. In short, I think you must have heard this word BMR, basal metabolic rate. It is a bit slowed down by the practice of yoga. Sin. How, what are the benefits and other things, we'll be discussing it in some other lecture. But definitely, you can just for the time being note down that it slows down the basal metabolic rate. And minimum utilization, minimum requirement of oxygen if the movements are slow movements. A simple example I can give you. <clears throat> Say, you're sitting here, if I tell you, okay, come on, you can get up and run as fast as possible, go to the ashram gate and come back. The one who comes first gets a cup of coffee. Forget about it, you are not going to get coffee. But then when you come back and sit here, what happens? The heart rate is a bit more. The respiration is also more. You don't need a doctor to check your pulse or check your respiration. You yourselves know that the heart rate has increased, the respiratory rate has increased. Why? Because you went running and came back running. Fast movements heart and lungs had to work more. But then on the other hand, if you just go walking, 
the same distance and come back here walking the same distance. Is your heart rate increased? It's quite normal. The respiration, it's also quite normal. So what was the difference? The distance was the same, but the speed was different. So when you went running, it was predominantly the white fibers. And when you uh, uh, went uh, walking, it was predominantly the red fibers. Okay. Now, one more thing which is obviously related with yogic practice. You can see this is just uh, the muscle fibers, what we said, the bunch of muscle fibers. Uh, before we go to the next thing, just one uh, simple thing, which is a theoretical thing. I will not talk more about it. The types of muscles, there are three types of muscles in our body. They are the voluntary muscles, the involuntary muscles and the cardiac muscles. So nothing uh, much difference uh, to be talked about these muscle fibers. We will focus again on the work of the muscles, which is very important. The work of the muscles, it can be done isotonically and isometrically. Now these two words, I think you might have heard them. If some of you are going for some weight training and other things, you know these two words that you can work your muscles isotonically and you can work your muscles isometrically. What is the difference? Till date, I have not understood what is the difference. Then you will say how you are going to make us understand. Making you understand is simple. Understanding myself is difficult. We'll go forget about the technical things. I'll just give you some examples. Isotonic. For example, if I lift something from the floor and put it here on the table, are my muscles working? Answer is yes. Okay, you lifted up, you maybe uh, reached for that object, lifted it and put it here on the table. There is some movement of my arm, there is some contraction, some relaxation of the muscles and yes, you can. So the type of work which is done by the muscles, it can be isotonic and isometric. Now, isotonic in simple words, we can say where there is visible contraction, relaxation of the muscles. You can say it's a isotonic work which is done by the muscles. Now, <coughs> the technical things will go for them afterwards. But then, coming to the isometric work. Say for example, if you stand at one place, just standing, no movements of your legs. You are just standing at one place, maybe five minutes. So do you expect, do you feel that your muscles are working at that time? The leg muscles I'm talking of, whatever the names, I'm not interested in the names. You're standing, just standing for five minutes, no movements of your legs. You're just standing there. Are the muscles of your legs working? The answer is yes. What they are doing? They are preventing you from falling down. Right. They are maintaining their posture. They are holding your posture. They are maintaining your posture. So there is no movement of your legs. There is no contraction. There is no relaxation. But still you are saying that yes, when I'm standing, my muscles are working. That kind of work, I can say it is isometric work. So there is no visible contraction, no relaxation, nothing you can see, but still you are saying, oh yes, the muscles are working. What they are doing? They are maintaining, they are holding your position. So it's a isometric work. But the moment you start moving your legs, for example, you don't walk, but you are standing at one place and you are just moving your legs up and down. The movement, the work, it becomes isometric. Now, you can check one very important thing, isotonic type of work, it requires more quantities of oxygen and isometric work, it requires less quantities of oxygen. Now, you are smart enough, you have started practicing yogasana and what are the three important parts of a yogasana practice? First is getting into the position. Second is holding the position or maintaining the position and the third one is releasing the position or getting out of the position. So you can divide a yogasana in three different parts, getting into the position, holding the position and releasing the position. So when you are getting into the position, 
and when you are releasing the position it's the isotonic type of work because there is movement you are doing some movements move your leg move your arm maybe twist your back or something like that so what you are doing is is isotonic type of work which is done by the muscles but then by this time you know now that the most important part of a yoga sun practice is holding the position maintaining the position for certain time maybe 5 seconds maybe 10 seconds maybe 15 seconds after that maybe half minute one minute two minutes you go on increasing the time of holding the position so the most important aspect of yoga sun is to hold and when you are holding the position you are working your muscles isometric isometrically and as i said earlier when you work isometrically you require less quantities less amounts of oxygen and again when you are using less amounts of oxygen your metabolism is a bit slowed down so the effect again is on metabolism the physical effect is okay the physical effect on the uh, like the joints the ligaments the muscles is fine but then if you are working in this way the metabolism will be slowed down and obviously when you are getting into the position and when you are releasing the position what you are doing it's slow movements and with this slow movements further if you remember 10 minutes back we talked about slow movements you require less oxygen so the whole concept is to minimize your energy expenditure the whole concept is to minimize the energy requirement and expenditure or efficient utilization of energy that would be achieved if you do the yoga sun gently slowly and hold the position now another question which comes up when you are holding the position actually what you are supposed to do the first instruction which is given to you by the yoga teacher here is try to relax huh? relax in the position come on how is possible you are holding such some absurd position your head down and the legs up and the teacher is telling you relax the question is is it possible that you are in a position cobra pose for example there is a nasty pain in your lower back maybe doing the cobra pose for the first time it's un uncomfortable here in the lower back and the teacher is telling you oh come on relax is this relaxation possible but then the whole definition of yoga sun is relaxation and comfort sthira sukhasan sthira is steady sukha is comfortable so if you are comfortable if you are steady in a position only then it is called a yoga sun maybe no matter how ideal posture you have achieved of any position but if you are not comfortable in that position according to definition it is not a yoga sun so you need to relax you need to be comfortable the students say oh how is it possible if we relax we will fall down technically it's right if you would relax you are going to fall down but then this relaxation is achieved the longer you go on holding the position so for that we need to go a bit further deeper inside understanding the nervous system say for example if you are standing 5 minutes i told you can you stand for 5 minutes most of you comfortably no problem there is no pain in legs nothing you are comfortable standing 5 minutes without any movements so there are no movements you are steady and you are comfortable so standing is also a yoga posture because you are comfortable by definition yoga posture is steady comfortable position is a yoga posture so you are steady no movements you are standing perfectly comfortable relaxed it's a yoga posture so you can stand for 5 minutes can you do the cobra pose 5 minutes why not what's the difference if you can stand for 5 minutes without pain and ache and without any uh, complaints why not the cobra pose for 5 minutes because we are not comfortable we are not relaxed in that particular position so what is this relaxation we just try to understand it at a medical level at a technical level we can say so for example if i just extend my arm like this and hold it 
Is it a yoga posture? Forget about it, if it's a yoga posture or not. I'm holding my arm. Are the muscles working? Yes, definitely. They're preventing my arm from falling down. So the muscles are working. Now you hold it for maybe 15, 20 seconds, half a minute. Our brain is very smart. It will not just sit ideal when you are holding the posture. Now for holding this posture, what you need actually? The muscles, all of them contracting and holding or I will say the word, the muscles here. Forget the names, I don't know the names. Forget about them, we are not interested in the names. They are working, holding the posture. When they are working, what they need is oxygen and blood, glucose. It's going on there. The brain, it starts calculating. What I am doing? I am just holding the, my hand like this and it is demanding oxygen, it is demanding glucose, it is demanding blood. So is it possible that I can minimize the demand of blood, oxygen and glucose to it? Brain is a smart boss, manager. Okay, so wants to give less oxygen but wants to get the same work done. So when I say the muscles are working, can I say that the muscle fibers are working, right? So there are muscle fibers which are working. So for a statistical example, I would say there are thousand fibers here which are working and holding the posture. Just a random example. A thousand fibers working, they are holding the posture. The brain says oxygen going to thousand fibers, then they are demanding glucose. Can I minimize? So the brain sends signal to 10 fibers you stop working. Let's see what happens. So now what's the situation? The brain has signaled 10 fibers out of those thousand fibers. You stop working. Let us see what happens. So now the condition is 990 fibers working, 10 fibers not working. Still the position is maintained. Position is maintained. The brain is happy, super happy. Why? Because it has saved oxygen which is required by that 10 fibers. It has saved the glucose which is required by that 10 fibers. Now the brain is super happy but the brain will not stop here. The brain will send further signal to another 10 fibers. Hey, you also stop working. Let's see what happens. So, now out of 1000 fibers, 980 fibers working, 20 fibers not working. What is the advantage? Less glucose, less oxygen, less energy. But still the hand, the arm position is maintained. The arm is not falling down. So this experimentation by the brain, it goes on and on and on and on. It goes on sending signals to few fibers at a time. You stop working, let's see what happens. So the brain, it comes to a minimum number of fibers which are required to hold the position. A minimum number. Beyond that, it's not possible that if the work is stopped, the hand will not be maintained in position. So maybe in our example, we can say its minimum number of fibers which are required is 700 fibers. Even if 700 fibers are working out of those 1000 fibers, still the position can be maintained. And what is the advantage now? We are conserving the oxygen, we are conserving the glucose. But the story doesn't stop here. What would happen now? 700 working, 300 not working. But then after a few seconds, those 700 which were working, some of them will start complaining. Hey, I've been working too long now. I can't hold this position. I'm tired. What should I do? The fiber asks the brain. The brain says, okay, if you are tired, you stop working. And those fibers, 300 fibers, which were not working, you are just there. You are not working. You take over their job. So cyclically, some fibers will be working, some fibers will not be working. And this can go on and on and on for a very long duration of time. The same thing is happening when I gave you the example of standing. You're standing at one place, five minutes. Yes, no problem. 10 minutes, no problem. Even sometimes half an hour also. You are maybe going in the metro and you don't get a place to sit. So you are standing. So okay, 15-20 minutes, you stand at a place comfortably. This thing is happening in your legs. So this relaxation is expected in all the yoga postures. 
So again, when you are holding the postures, minimum number of fibers are working, minimum oxygen utilization, minimum energy utilization. And obviously, the fibers will keep working cyclically so that you can hold the position for longer duration of time. And that is what is relaxation expected in the final position. And why this relaxation is expected? Because you want to go further in your yoga practice. Because now uh, you know Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga is basically Yamaniyam, Asan Pranayam. We are talking of that. So you are in the asana stage but if you want to go for for example concentration for meditation you are sitting in padmasana and what's the first thing which comes up in a padmasana uh, there is something wrong stiffness in my back and you want to meditate how is it possible your mind can't focus if there is pain in your back your mind can't focus if there is pain in your ankle so all these yoga postures they make you comfortable at a physical level so that you can go for the higher levels of yogic practices. Just sitting five minutes in Padmasana is not possible and we are talking of meditation. Oh, I am meditating. How come you are meditating? There was a pain in your back and it's practically not possible for your mind, your brain to focus on certain things. Your mind, your brain was focusing on the lower back pain. So all these different types of asana practice is just at one level, I am talking only about the physical level because we are talking about anatomy and physiology. So I am talking at a physical level. So they can relax you, they can comfort you at a physical level so that you go to the higher levels of yogic practices. So the things which we discussed in this session related with the muscular system was the slowness of the movements, which is very important. Then we talked about the steadiness in the postures, holding the postures and in the end we talked about relaxation in the postures. So the overall effect of that would be less energy utilization, you will conserve the energy and it will have an effect on your metabolism. So in some next session we will be talking about the metabolism, the advantages and other things, the way you practice yoga according to the slowness, steadiness and comfort. So for the time being, we stop with the muscular system. Hari Om.